Do we have any examples from here, from today? And the answer is yes. A modern or more recent example of a Muslim being a source of servitude and therefore a source of light and guidance in their community can be seen when we read the history of the city where I'm from or where I live, Liverpool in the United Kingdom. The first mosque in the country is now known as the Quilliam Mosque. And there's an amazing story of an amazing individual in Liverpool, in the UK. He was called William Henry Quilliam. And he was from middle class society. He was a very well respected person in the community. He was the head of a trade union. He ran many different organizations. He was respected by the high people in, in the community and also by the low people. He was a solicitor, a lawyer by trade. And what happened is that he fell ill. This is in the 1880s or the 1870s when Queen Victoria was still ruling in the United Kingdom. It was the time of Queen Victoria. So about 120 years ago, we have a European example now of Khidma. So William Henry Quilliam became ill and his doctor advised him to go somewhere warmer to make his recovery even more quick. So he decided to go to Gibraltar, which was and still is a British enclave at the bottom of Spain. It's still to this day, it's considered to be, be part of the United Kingdom. So he went to Gibraltar to get, to get better. And as the story goes, he used to look over the Straits of Gibraltar and he would see the mountains of Morocco and he would wonder what was in these mountains. He would wonder what was over there. And as the story goes, one day he got a boat and he went over to Morocco and he was amazed. He was amazed with Moroccan culture, with Moroccan people and more than anything with the Deen with the character, the way of life, the religion of the people of Morocco. And he embraced Islam. He became a Muslim. He came back to the United Kingdom. Now don't forget, he was a very well positioned person in society. He came back to the United Kingdom and he founded a mosque, the first mosque in the UK. And many people converted to Islam at his hands. The estimates are about 400 to 500 people became Muslim with Sheikh Abdullah Quilliam, as he changed his name to Abdullah Henry Quilliam. Many people became Muslim. But the mosque which he founded was not just a mosque to come in and pray, but it was a center for the service of the whole of the community. And what's amazing is that 120 years ago in Liverpool, in my city, there was a mosque and there was an Islamic center which was doing more community work and more service for the people of Liverpool that even we are today as a community of 50,000 Muslims. Back then there were about 350 Muslims and the vast majority of them were all converts to Islam. They were all English Muslims. But what did they do? What went on in this building? They were servants. They brought themselves down and they served people. What were the activities which they ran? Believe it or not, 120 years ago in the city of Liverpool, there was an orphanage, Medina Orphanage it was called, where they took in children, sometimes bastard children, from Jewish and Christian mothers who couldn't bring up their children because of the stigmas in society back then. They took in these children and they brought them up within an Islamic environment. How many Islamic orphanages do you have in the Netherlands today? None. How many do we have in the United Kingdom? None. In France and Germany. This is a service. It's a service to people. They served people through education. They used to have scholars, intellectuals come in and talk about not just Islam, but about science and about physics and about mathematics. And they would teach people in this Islamic center about these things. And bear in mind, this was in a time when people could not even go to school, never mind university. In Victorian times, it was very rough. So what other services did Sheikh Abdullah Quilliam and the community in Liverpool run 120 years ago? Wait for this. They used to have Christmas lunch in the mosque, Christmas dinner in the mosque on the day of Christmas, on the 25th of December. Not because they used to celebrate Christmas, but they used to hold it for all the homeless people and all the people in Liverpool who didn't have a family and were feeling lonely and who were feeling left out on the day of Christmas. Imagine that. Christmas dinner in the mosque. Nowadays, if you, if you, astaghfirullah, Christmas dinner in the mosque. But these were people of service. They were people who wanted to serve others. 
What else did the community do? They used to feed the homeless people. They used to invite people into the mosque and feed homeless people. Whether they were Muslim or not, it made no difference. It was a concept of service. And this is why their community thrived. And this is why their community was respected. Sheikh Abdullah Quilliam, he was a solicitor by trade. He was a lawyer. And what he would do is offer free, free legal representation to people who were oppressed in society. Whether these were Muslim or whether they were not Muslim, he would represent them in court for free. And Liverpool, back in those times, like Rotterdam, was a huge port city. What you had were people coming in from all different parts of the world, from all different parts of the world. And many of these people were workers from Bangladesh, from India, from Yemen, from other parts of the British Empire who worked on the ships. Some of them would die, some of them would pass away. They would perform the janazah, the funeral prayer at the mosque for them and Sheikh Abdullah Quilliam would make sure and he would make it his job to go and visit the company who they worked for and make sure that all the wages of this person were paid to them and he would make sure it was sent back to their family in the different parts of the world. So this was a man of service, this was a man with a vision. And we have this example in Sheikh Abdullah Quilliam. Now when we say Sheikh Abdullah Quilliam, what does that mean? Nowadays when we say Sheikh, it just means brother. It's a title which we just throw around randomly. Let me tell you about the title of Sheikh Abdullah Quilliam. He was given the rank of Sheikh al-Islam in the British Isles by Sultan Abdul Hamid II of the Ottoman Empire. By the Sultan. He was given the rank of Sheikh al-Islam of the British Isles. And he was considered likewise by the Emir of Afghanistan. And the Moroccan religious authorities recognized him as a alim. He was the real deal. He was a real thing, mashaAllah. So much so that he used to represent Sultan Abdul Hamid II of the Ottoman Empire in Africa. There are archives of him opening a mosque in Nigeria on behalf of the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. So he was properly positioned and he was respected. He used to have amazing links with the people at the top of society. So he wrote a book on understanding Islam and he sent a copy to Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria wrote back to him saying that I really enjoyed this book. Could I have more copies for my grandchildren please? Requesting more copies of this book on Islam. He used to hang around with the queens and the kings and the sultans and the emirs and the alims. But at the same time, he could fit in with the lowest people in society or who were considered to be the lowest people in society. He would help the prostitutes. He would help the homeless. He would help the poor people. And this is an example of what we have of khidmah. And it's an example which we derive directly from the example of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions and everybody who's followed in their footsteps. The footsteps of genuine, sincere, pure Islam. We can find that the people of Islam today are people of khidmah by their nature. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them from them and with them insha'Allah. But what happened with uh, Abdullah Quilliam and the community? And this is, this is the interesting thing because the Abdullah Quilliam Mosque has only just been reopened just before Ramadan this year. Because what happened is that he moved down south, he moved to the London area where the community then went to Woking, a city called Woking, in which we have the first purpose-built mosque in the UK. And that's where the community thrived with the, the British, the English scholars. As for Liverpool, there were racist attacks after Sheikh Abdullah Quilliam and the community gradually dwindled away. Some of Sheikh Abdullah Quilliam's descendants still are around in the Merseyside area. Uh, for example, some of them came to the opening. Some of them are Muslim and some of them are not Muslim. Uh, but what happened is that the community kind of drifted away, went down to Woking. We didn't know ourselves about this mosque and the history behind this mosque until maybe 15 years ago. It wasn't, it wasn't well known. What happened is that the mosque, the building, and the five terraced houses were bought by the Liverpool City Council, which is the municipality of Liverpool. So it became their property. And in that building was the registrar for births, marriages and deaths. So the vast majority of middle-aged people in Liverpool will have been married in this building, which was the mosque. The council employees, this is the amazing part of the story, the council employees when they worked there, they used to tell each other, go down to the little mosque 
and get me such and such a file from the archives. They used to refer to it as the little mosque, but nobody really knew why. And then it emerged that the mosque was actually the first mosque in, in the UK. Research was done and we found out, you know, this is, this is a very, very important place. So what happened is that Liverpool City Council, who we've got excellent links and relations with, they decided to give the mosque back to the Muslim community for the cost of one pound. A symbolic cost of one pound. They gave it to the Muslim community on condition, they made a condition, and it's a condition which was happily accepted, on condition that it be turned into a heritage centre so that everybody can understand, everybody in society can understand the history about the mosque, about the man and about the community back then. Now the mosque section of the project has been opened just before Ramadan. The greater part of the project, which is the heritage centre, the community services, we still have a long way to go. But the good news is we have the blueprint. Sheikh Abdullah Quliam, he set the agenda and all we need to do is bring that work back to life. And the idea is to do everything which Sheikh Abdullah Quliam did back in his day, but with a modern twist. So for example, the printing press. We have no need of a printing press in 2014. But what we can do is have a media training centre where people can benefit from learning about the media, being involved in the media. For example, it would be very difficult to open a Muslim orphanage nowadays because orphanages in general don't really exist the same way that they would have done in Victorian times. But what we can do is have a Muslim adoption or a Muslim fostering service within there to help match up, matching up uh, Muslim children to live with Muslim families. So the whole idea is to follow in the blueprint which was set by Sheikh Abdullah Quliam and bring it back to life, inshallah. So please uh, remember us in your du'as for, for, for this project, inshallah.